welcome back to Historical American Girl Read Aloud. Today we are beginning the Meet Kaya series. Of all of the historical periods that American Girl created dolls for, Kaya is from the oldest period, the period that's the longest time ago, the furthest back in history. She is from 1764, so a little while, about 10 years or so before the Felicity stories. The Kaya doll that I have, I've had for a very long time. It belonged to one of my daughters and was well loved. So some of the things that she is wearing and some of the parts of her outfit aren't exactly what they looked like in the first place, but they are authentic to where Kaya lived which was on the northwest coast of the United States. The Namipu people, her tribe, lived in Washington, Oregon, and Idaho. The horse that we have here is also not the actual American Girl horse, but it's one that looks a lot like hers. So we're going to start Meet Kaya today, and there's a lot of Native American words in the book. So I will do my best to pronounce them correctly. In the front of the book, it says, Kaya and her family are Namipu, known today as Nez Pierce Indians. They speak the Nez Pierce language. So you'll see some Nez Pierce words in this book. Kaya is short for the Nez Pierce name, Kaya Aton Mai, which means she who arranges rocks. Chapter one is called, Let's Race. When Kaya and her family rode over the hill into Waluwa, the valley of the winding waters, her horse pricked up her ears and whinnied. Answering whinnies came from the large herd grazing nearby. Kaya stroked the smooth shoulder of her horse. Go easy, steps high, she said softly. We'll be there soon. But steps high whinnied again and began to prance, stepping high just like her name. Speaking Rain's old pony whinnied too. A sickness in Speaking Rain's eyes had caused her to lose her sight so Kaya held the lead rope of her pony. I hear so many horses, Speaking Rain said. What do you see, Kaya? Tell me. Because Speaking Rain's parents had died, she'd lived with Kaya's family and was a sister to her. Kaya studied the white peaked mountains, the broad valley and the shining lake so she could share the beauty of this beloved place with her blind sister. The snow is still deep on the mountains, Kaya said. The lake reflects the green hills and the blue sky. The river's full of red salmon and running higher than I've ever seen it. The teepees are set far back from the bank. Where is everyone? Speaking Rain asked. She held her buckskin doll against her chest. Some men are spearfishing in the river, Kaya said. Some little boys are tossing up a hoop and trying to shoot arrows through it. Little girls are playing near the teepees and all along the shore, women are cleaning and drying salmon. I've smelled the salmon for a long time, Speaking Rain said. It's a powerful scent. The men must have a big catch this year. It was midsummer, the season when the salmon swam upstream to the lake to lay their eggs. Many bands of Namipu gathered here each year to catch and dry the salmon. Kaya and her family were traveling with several other families from Salmon River country to join the fishing. Her family was also visiting her father's parents. Kaya loved these reunions with her grandparents and her many other relatives, old and young, 
all the children were just like brothers and sisters to each other. Kaya's mother and her older sister, Brown Deer, rode just ahead. Her mother glanced back over her shoulder, then reined in her horse and motioned for Brown Deer and Kaya to do the same. What is it, Itza? Kaya asked her mother. The bundles on my pack horse have slipped a little. They'll rub a sore spot if I don't balance them again, Itza said. I need to retie them. Itza and Brown Deer quickly slipped off their horses and began untying some woven bags from a pack horse. Wing Feather, one of Kaya's twin brothers, had been riding behind Itza's saddle. The other twin, Sparrow, rode behind Brown Deer's. It had been a long journey and the little boys were restless. Kaya helped the boys down so they could stretch their legs. The boys giggled as they scampered to hide between a travoy and peeked over, their dark eyes gleaming. Look after your brothers well, Itza told Kaya, as she always did. Itza and Brown Deer hung several woven bags of dried roots and dried buffalo meat on their saddle horns. As they worked, they glanced eagerly at the teepees along the river. Kaya smiled to herself. She was thinking that Namipu loved to travel, but they loved the excitement of arrival even more. Already, her grandfather and two of her uncles were riding out to greet them. I'm so glad we're here, Brown Deer said. She smoothed her buckskin dress and touched the abalone shells she wore in her ears. Remember what fun we had the last time we visited? Kaya nodded. Ah, hey, I remember what fun you had dancing every night. I wonder which boys will serenade you this time, she teased. After the hard work came hours of trading and games. There would be feasting, singing, and always dancing, with the beat of the drums echoing down the valley. Kaya turned and saw her father gazing at the herd of sleek horses some of them spotted in the wide meadow. Perhaps Tota was thinking of trading for some of the horses or of the races they'd have. He was an expert horseman. Often he won races on his fleet-footed stallion. Kaya was certainly thinking about horse races. For a long time, she'd imagined being in one on her adored Steps High. She knew Steps High was fast but also young and untested. Tota had told her that Steps High wasn't ready to race yet. When Itza was satisfied that everything was in order, she and Brown Deer mounted their horses. Kaya helped the little boys climb back onto the patient animals and take their places again. When Kaya turned to Steps High, the horse tossed her head and pawed the ground. Kaya rubbed her cheek against Steps High's soft muzzle. If only we could race, I know we'd win, she whispered as she climbed into the saddle. Did you say something to me? Speaking Rain asked as Kaya took her pony's lead rope again. I was talking to Steps High, Kaya said. I told her that when we race, we'll beat all the others. Itza turned to look Kaya in the eye. I've told you before not to boast she said firmly. Our actions speak for us. Our deeds show our worth. Let that be your lesson, Kaya. Kaya pressed her lips together. She knew Itza was right. Come, let's meet the others, Tota said, and led the way on his stallion. When Kaya and her family rode up, her grandmother, Ala, and one of her aunts were waiting at the doorway of their teepee. Ala stepped forward. Her face was creased with age and little pockmarks like fingerprints covered her cheeks. Tots may we, she said. Welcome, my son. Welcome all of you. Smiling, she hugged Kaya and speaking rain as soon as they climbed off their horses. Then she took the twins into her arms. 
She kissed their chubby cheeks and tugged their braids. Tots may we, Itza said. As Tota and the others dismounted and shared greetings, she took the woven bags from her saddle horn. We brought these for you, she said, offering their gifts with pleasure. It was an honor to give them. Allah received the gifts with thanks. Then Auntie put one hand on Kaya's shoulder and her other hand on speaking reins. You've grown. Are you hard workers like your sister Brown Deer? Ah, hey, we are, Kaya and Speaking Rain said at the same time and giggled. Tots, Auntie nodded. You girls, help Brown Deer unpack the horses and bring your things inside. Kaya and Brown Deer carried their bundles into the teepee and placed them across from where their grandparents slept. Speaking Rain stacked the bundles neatly along the wall of the teepee. It was always packed full when they gathered here, but Kaya liked it crowded and cozy, and the tool mats that covered the teepee let in cool breezes and light. After the women and girls had put everything in order around the teepee, Itza allowed Kaya to take Speaking Rain and the little boys to play. Remember, it's your job to look after your brothers carefully, she reminded Kaya. Kaya knew there were dangerous animals about. She also knew about the stick people, small mischievous people who might lure a child to wander too far away in the woods. Ahe, Kaya said, I will. She led Speaking Rain and the twins to a group of boys and girls gathered in the shade beside the river. Raven, a boy a little older than Kaya, was playing a game with a length of hemp cord. Here's what happened when Coyote went to put up his teepee, Raven said. The twins watched wide eyes as Raven's fingers flashed, weaving the cord into the shape of a teepee. Then, with a tug, he made the teepee collapse. Coyote worked too fast, he said. He didn't tie the poles properly, and his teepee fell down on him. Everyone laughed, and the twins squealed at the fun. Raven leaned back on his elbows in the thick grass. I see you have a new horse, little sister, he said to Kaya. She's a pretty one. She's the prettiest horse in the whole herd, Kaya said. She couldn't disguise her pride. Steps High wasn't large, only about 13 hands high. She had a black head and chest, a white rump with black spots on it, and a white star on her forehead. She's fast too, Kaya added. That wasn't boasting, she thought. She was just saying what was true. Foxtail squatted beside her. He was a bothersome boy who could be rude. He always followed Raven, trying to impress the older boy. Your horse looks skittish to me, he said to Kaya. Why would your father give you a horse like that? Tota didn't choose my horse, Kaya said. My horse chose me. Foxtail laughed and slapped his leg. <laughs> Your horse chose you? How? One day I was riding by the herd with Tota, Kaya said. A filly kept nickering to me, so I whistled to her. She followed me. She came up to me and pushed her head against my leg. Tota said that meant she wanted to be my horse. He worked with her so I could ride her. Is that a true story? Foxtail demanded. Ask my father if that's true, Kaya said. I believe you, Raven said. But you say she's fast. Should I believe that too? I haven't raced her yet, but I've run her many times, Kaya said. She glides over the ground like the shadow of an eagle. Foxtail jumped to his feet. <laughs> like an eagle? Big talk, he said. Let's race our horses and see if yours flies like you claim she does. Yes, let's race. Raven got to his feet too. 
Kaya had an uneasy feeling. Oh, I shouldn't have boasted about her speed, she thought. I've never raced her. My horse is tired now, she said hesitantly. She's not too tired for one short ride, Foxtail insisted. Maybe your horse isn't so fast after all. Kaya felt her face grow hot. Her horse was as swift as the wind. She was sired by Tota's fine stallion runner. Sired means that runner was the father of this horse. Kaya stood up. Speaking Rain, could you take care of the twins for me? She asked. I know it's my job, but I want to race. Speaking Rain was braiding strands of grass into bracelets for the little boys. I'll try, but sometimes they play tricks on me. I'll only be gone a little while, Kaya assured her. So remember that Speaking Rain is blind, so it would be really difficult for her to keep an eye on two little boys. Kaya, Raven, and Foxtail got on their horses and rode up to the raised plain at the end of the lake. Often, people held celebrations and races here on the level ground. But today, Kaya and the boys were alone. Now that she'd decided to race, Kaya was eager to begin. Steps High seemed eager too. When Foxtail's roan horse came close, Steps High arched her neck and flattened her ears. When Raven's chestnut horse passed her, she trotted faster. Raven reined in his horse. We'll start here. When I give the signal, we'll race until we pass that boulder at the far end of the field. He held his hand high. Then he brought it down and they were off. The boys took the lead, stones spurting from under their horses' hooves. They lay low on their horses, their weight forward. They ran neck and neck. Steps High bolted after them, but swung out too wide. Kaya pressed her heels into Steps High's sides. Then she gave Steps High her head, and her horse sprang forward. Kaya thrilled to feel her horse gather herself, lengthen out, and gallop flat out. She was running as she'd never run before. Her long strides were so smooth that she seemed to be floating her hooves barely touching the earth. Her dark mane whipped Kaya's face. Grit stung her lips. She clung to her horse, barely aware that she'd caught the other horses until they passed them. She and Steps High were in the lead. Then suddenly Steps High began to buck. She plunged head down, heels high. Kaya grasped her mane and hung on. She bit her tongue and tasted blood. Steps high bucked again. That means she kicked her back legs up into the air. So it's hard to stay on the horse when it's kicking its back legs up in the air. Raven spun his horse around. He was beside Steps high in an instant and grabbed the rein. He pulled the horse sharply to him and in the same motion he halted his own horse. Steps high skidded to a standstill, foam lathering her neck. Kaya slid off. Steps High's eyes were wild. For a moment, she seemed never to have been tamed at all. Kaya's legs were shaking badly, but her first thought was to calm her horse. She began to stroke Steps High's trembling head and neck. Foxtail came galloping back. I knew that horse was skittish, he cried. She just proved it. She proved she's fast too, Raven said. Kaya wanted to thank Raven for coming to her aid, but her wounded pride was a knife in her chest. She could hardly get her breath. Leading her horse slowly to cool her down, Kaya silently walked away from the boys. When Kaya had rubbed down steps high, she turned her horse out to graze. Then she started back through the woods, heading toward the river. Her feelings were all tangled up like a nest of snakes. She was excited that Steps High had run so fast, but she was disappointed that her horse had broken her training. 
She was relieved that she hadn't been bucked off, but she wished the boys hadn't seen her lose control. She knew she shouldn't have boasted, but she also wished she could have made good on her boast and won the race. When Kaya glanced up from nursing her hurt feelings, Foxtail was coming down the trail toward her on foot. He stopped right in front of her. You told us your horse chose you, he said with a smirk. Would you choose her after the way she tried to buck you off today? She's the best horse ever, Kaya said. She can run faster than your horse, and I can run faster than you too. Want to race me right now? Foxtail cocked his head. The first one to the riverbank wins, he cried. He turned and sprinted away down the path. For a little while, Kaya was right on his heels. Then Foxtail left the path, leapt over a fallen log, and took off through the woods. He must know a shortcut, Kaya thought. She followed him. But she couldn't keep him in sight because he jagged in and out of shadows. Was that his dark head behind the bushes? Now she was uncertain which way to go. She stopped to listen for the sound of the river as her guide. She stood in a gloomy clearing surrounded by black willows. She listened for rushing water. There was only silence. No wind blew in the leaves. No flies buzzed. All she could hear was her heartbeat. Then a twig snapped behind her. She whirled around. Did something just duck behind that tree? The shadows around her seemed to waver and sway. Was it the stick people? Had they led her to this part of the woods? Kaya held her breath. She knew the stick people were cunning and crafty. They were strong too. She'd heard they could carry off a baby and leave it a long way from its mother. A flock of jays cawed. Or was it the stick people signaling to her? They seemed to be saying, Forgot! Forgot! Kaya shivered. What had she forgotten? Then she guessed. <gasps> She'd forgotten her little brothers! Kaya should never have given her job to speaking rain. The little boys were four winters old, just the right age for mischief. Kaya must get back to them at once before they got into danger. She knew she must leave a gift for the stick people in return for their help. They became angry with people who didn't treat them respectfully. She found rose hips in the bag she wore on her belt and placed them on the moss. Then she began running back the way she'd come. And that's the end of chapter one. Ooh, do you think she's gonna be in trouble? Will her little twin brothers be okay? They're only four winters old, so that must mean four years old. I thought it was interesting in the story how Kaya did not call her parents mother and father, but by their first names, Tota and Itza. It was also interesting when they talked about the earrings that her sister wore in her ears. She mentioned that they were made of abalone shells, and that's what these are, although Kaya has hers in her hair and not in her ears. And my Kaya has extra ones at the bottom of her braids, as well as some tiny ones here. Another thing that was interesting was when they talked about the tulle mats that they placed on their teepees. In the next episode, I'll show you Kaya's teepee, and I'll also show you the tulle mats that they were talking about in this part of the story. Tune in next time to see what happens when Kaya gets back to her family. See you next time.